morning. I'm out in my little garden. She's been spruced. There you go. I'm gonna just kind of show you guys around, tell you what's going on. This is the latest I've ever actually planted this garden. It is May 15th and I haven't planted my sunflowers. I haven't done anything. Normally I'm like right on top of this, but you know what? We have some storms coming in today. In the weather report, it says torrential downpours, which is a great time to plant some seeds. I'm gonna come back for these in a second. And typically what I do is I plant a wall of sunflowers right here along this chicken fence and then throw out on the ends of these beds so then it grows up and it's like a sunflower tunnel. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna plant them on the ends of these beds because I've already planted some poppies in some other things. We'll see what happens. But I did want to take you around and just show you what's growing, even though I haven't planted a lot in here, but there is some perennial things that are in here. So first right, when you walk in the gate, is this lilac bush, which my cow is out and about, so she might pop in here, which I just milked her. Speaking of that, this is the best year for udder. If you're a cow person, you would understand this. Otherwise, this might sound weird, but this is the best year her udder's ever looked after calving. So normally she has really bad edemia, which is swelling of the udder, and it looks terrible. She's shedding, so don't mind her coat. She's off to go see baby. I better go let her in. Oh, you guys want to see Miss Patty? I'm all over the place in this video. Um, let's go let Mia in. Come on, mama. Miss Patty is a week and a half now. Well, she'll actually, it's Monday. She'll be two weeks. She'll be two weeks old on Thursday. Let's go see the baby. She's doing so well. She's already a little wildling. So that's our goal this week. Get out here and mess with her. So she's not so wild. But she's going to get up and run. They're obviously using that tree to scratch on. Hi, sweet girl. Hi, sweet girl. So that's Mama Mia, obviously, Utter, Suki, Miss Patty. Hi, baby girl. You're getting so big, so big. Been super well, but Mia's udder is the best it's been. The demia is the swelling of the udder. We haven't been dealing with that at all. This is like, there's her udder looking real good. We've been milking. This is the first day we're gonna test out the milk. Typically, the colostrum stays in the milk for a couple weeks. Um, it's looking pretty creamy and normal, so we're just gonna try that out and see if it tastes weird. Um, the colostrum's still in it, and we'll just pass it on to our animals. That's what we've been doing now. I've been giving it to the chickens or the pigs. It's been a really great time. Mia's been very hormonal. Some days are like, she's golden. And other days, she's a raging lunatic. Okay, back. So this lilac bush I got as a twig. There's chicken feathers on it. And this is its third year. It's doing really well. It's gonna be gorge. Look at it. It's growing so big. It was so small a few years ago. So this is the first perennial I'm gonna show you. Then over here, so a lot of homesteaders talk about comfrey and it being a really good, uh, whatchamacallit, permaculture plant because you can chop and drop and it like gets into the deep roots of a of your soil and brings those nutrients up into their leaves. So then when you put cut the leaves, put it on the soil, you put those nutrients right back into your soil, which is why people really like it in permaculture. Now, because we are in such a harsh climate, uh, chicken, stay out. We had a pig break into the chicken coop today and let out a bunch of chickens. So we're gonna gather those gals back up. So, and also we're building a pig palace. This is totally off topic, but we're big building a pig palace is what we're calling it. And they're gonna have, and pen, they won't be able to get out of these fences. The hot wire we use, Premier One fencing. <laughs> these naughty pigs are pretty naughty. Okay, anyway, so comfrey growing in our zone, typically a lot of, at least what I've seen, homesteaders that live in very warm climates, well, like North Carolina, I know Justin Rhodes uses this a lot, is the comfrey. Well, we have a Russian comfrey that we can grow here, and I bought it off Etsy. This is one that's coming back this year. 
and I have another I bought two off Etsy and my friend that lives down the road from me who's also my neighbor gave me a couple chunks of hers which we'll go back and see if those are coming back as well we got my my rhubarb coming back and my raspberries they are coming back i am not a pro with raspberries if you got any tips for me for like pruning and doing all that stuff let me know okay okay so this whole row is raspberries and they are all they're all starting to get leaves they're doing really good. In the first bed, when you walk in, I have Egyptian walking onions. I just saw something. <laughs> Looks like one got uh, upheavaled, but it's still alive. So we're just gonna plant it. It looks like we got one coming back here. This compost I put on was chicken bedding that we cleaned out this fall and put it directly on the beds. I don't know if I'll do that again. It's staying pretty clumpy, so it's making things harder to get through. Things are getting through, but it is harder. You can see things are coming up over here. This side of the bed is doing really well. These walking onions are awesome. So these are a perennial. They'll come back year after year. Okay, so here, chives. They're doing good. Look at, they're getting some, they're getting some buds already. Got a few buds in here. These you could already harvest, chop them down. They'll come, keep coming back. Also have a bunch there and a bunch there. So I have three bunches of chives, which I love chives. Over here in this corner, I think because we always have, we always are on the struggle bus with this corner because it gets the least amount of water because the tree I think cuts it off. We have hollyhocks back here and I planted a ton of poppies this really, I think I was on a video a few months ago and I hope this is just, this little corner turns into a lot, a lot of flowers. And I had showed you guys that my orange volunteered. It's doing really well. It's coming in, it's coming in absolutely everywhere so still on this first bed it's on the other side there's the walking onions there's my chive right there and over here it doesn't look like much but are these guys we got some more coming up and i filled this little area of it which oh they're starting to come up but like i said this compost i just need to get in here like break it up with my hands got the ton of mulch on here because I wanted to heavily mulch this because these are ramps and I really wanted them to grow good because they are from Appalachia and I wanted them here. I grew up a little bit in West Virginia. I'm an Oregonian, but grew up middle of my sixth grade year through my freshman year of college, then came back to Oregon for three years. Then my husband and I got married and I moved back to West Virginia for another three years. So a good portion of my life was in West Virginia, but I am an Oregonian. Ramps. I remember when we first moved to West Virginia, our neighbors gave us a bunch of dried ramps and we had no idea what the heck they were and how wonderful they are. Well, since leaving West Virginia and living in a climate that ramps don't grow wild, at least in central Oregon, I wouldn't be surprised if they grew in the valley like Portland over there, but here they don't. So I purchased them off Etsy. I love purchasing plants off Etsy, you get unique things. And I planted them last year and I just let them kind of green up last year and mulch the crap out of them with some warm compost because it was from the chickens that year and they survived at least a patch of them did so i got a bunch coming up here and each more keep coming up and i was really pleased because in his own three growing ramps heck yeah okay i don't think i have anything in this bed i need to plant this bed like i said this is a late planting but fortunately, because we are, the things I plant in here, they can go well into fall, sometimes even in December if I cover. So I'm not really worried about that at all. Hello! Escapees. Here we have some catmint. I got the seed off Amazon, I think, years ago, and it pops up everywhere. All these little seed things, those are lamb's quarter. So it is edible but they will take over your garden. This here is a current. 
it's doing good and all of these all of those are raspberries and i need to get in here and dig them up and transplant them over to their new home because you'll see how short they are compared to those guys um they're just not getting their full sun with all of these big pine trees so i want to get them some more sun transplant them out we've got very minimal harvest off them in years past anyway so uh, if they lose they don't produce this year what's new so i'm just trying to get them into a spot where they're going to do really well so i needed to start digging up this bed needs planted oh we got a little buddy hello little johnny jump up i love violas a lot of people may not like them because they're pretty invasive but they're the first to bloom and they're the last to stay happy so i love them just because they're so dang cheerful okay this entire bed that's covered in straw we planted i planted strawberries in here last year um some were given to us some my mom got for me and i'm seeing a little bit of life it is pretty early um let me just show you my established one. Ooh, here's another comfrey patch oh and i have some elderberries right here i'm gonna dig these guys up and move them too i gotta oh no i don't know i had four here so i don't know how many actually survived so i got my comfrey there here's a strawberry that's been in here for a few years it's starting to trail out a lot and it's alive so which tells me if my ones that survived are alive, I should start to be seeing some growth. Oh, no. This would be super sad if I can't find anything. I believe this is horseradish. Hey, my crazy gooseberry in the corner. So I think that is, oh, praise be. Ow, frick. My cousin, they moved to a area, like an hour, a little over an hour away. They had a bunch of lilacs, they gave them to us and I planted it. It looked like it was two sheets to the wind, but I planted it anyway. And it looked like this all year. Just kind of sad, sad lilac. I thought it'd be really cute. This is the chicken coop. I thought it'd be really cute next to the chicken coop to have a beautiful lilac. But look, we have life. So that's exciting. What's not exciting is these berries. So I need to get in here and plant one, two, three beds for sure. Plant my sunflowers today and get this garden really going. I think I completed my thought, but in case I didn't, but because this is the latest I've ever done this, but whatever what can you do it's been a busy year i still haven't even we still haven't finished the big garden planting yet i have four more beds and potatoes i gotta get in so sometimes you succession so on accident all right let's see i need some life oh what are you you don't look like a strawberry 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 do you think I killed every strawberry in here? Guys, I just do not have great success with strawberries. I can't even find like a, a stalk of it. Okay, well, I don't even know what to sell you. <gasps> no, parsnip. I'm gonna pray my strawberries come back to life. So as far as what sunflowers I like to plant. I like to do a variety. I definitely like the tall ones. I have found at least one year I did it, or a couple years I've done it. The big tall like titan sunflowers, I have a hard time growing here just because they get so huge. The heads get huge. The height isn't the problem, it's the heads maturing before we get frost. I've had them where they're like really like right about to bloom and we get a heavy frost and it kills it off. So my, the ones I've had the best success that you want, if you want the height, are the mammoth, the Russian mammoth, or I don't know, the really, the mammoth sunflowers. They do really well, which you're not, I, what I do is, I got a noisy farm today, people. What's new? 
I... That is the first time that I've seen her like really drink for a good amount of time. She's so fucking cute. Okay, I can feel it starting to rain. I'm gonna get these in real quick. Oh, I mixed them all together. So this one is this pack. The floor is sunny bouquet, so there are a lot of pro cuts. But other than that, I didn't put any of my other pro cuts in here. And I also put a ton of mammoth, and I did do a couple big ones just to see. Okay, okay, I'll hurry up. And I just mix them all in. So that way, I'm not actually that precise. I just go in and go. Then, if they don't germinate and they don't come up, or a bird ate them, or something happened, I come in and I re sow them. So I just keep going until it they catch up. So here we go. So we went a little crazy, ended up packing, hey, out. Ended up planting this whole pack. I did put some here and there, but I wanna show you this. This is a volunteer right here. That, that is a volunteer sunflower. So the first year we grew a ton of sunflowers in our garden was the first year we had our garden. And that's because we had let the chickens in here one, fall and winter when we feed black oiled sunflower seeds and they overwintered volunteers from their chicken feed. You can definitely plant in the fall or let your sunflowers go to seed in your garden, even in our zone. I have found that if they're grown in our zone and overwintered here, they're way more hardier. That's a really good sunflower. So I'll probably mark this sunflower. I'm not gonna take it out of the pathway because it's close enough that we can get around it. But that sunflower is going to be one of our strongest ones and it's very uh, capable of growing in our climate. So volunteers are great, especially sunflowers. Those I love volunteer sunflowers and we're going to get a lot of sunflowers, yo. So that's good. So I'm going to get inside, finish up my homeschool because yes, I need to finish up my homeschool. Uh, homeschooling. We only have a few more weeks of homeschool and we take a little break, which... I'm highly looking forward to. I hope you all had a great Mother's Day yesterday. I had a wonderful Mother's Day, it was lovely. Uh, my boys and husband are planting potatoes for me for my Mother's Day thing. We got a good bit done yesterday and we're drilling our holes with our auger, with our drill, and our drill kicked the bucket on us. So we picked up, my husband's picking up a new drill today and we're gonna finish it up this week just to get these plate potatoes planted. So now is a really good time to plant your potatoes if you're in our area. So get them out there, get going. Potatoes are frost tolerant. They are not frost resistant. They can handle a little bit of frost here and there. If it's a hard freeze, they're not gonna like it. Oh. Why I'm here. A couple videos ago, I planted spinach. I just threw it on the ground. A little bit willy nilly. I just want to show you guys. This is all spinach coming up. So, we got a bunch of spinach. You can see one with its seed cap here, 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 here. And I actually had, there's more coming up through over there right here in the bed and there so you saw me do that I just broadcasted it over ice it's now coming up and there you have it thank you guys so much for following along I'll see you on my next video and if you want to plant spinach without it going to bolt plant it on ice all right bye guys Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo.